This is my 2014 Toyota Tundra Crew Max SR5 with the 5.7. I absolutely love this truck. I've owned it for about five years, put 30,000 miles on it, and it has been great, except for the gas mileage. And the one flaw I believe it came with from the factory is the head unit. And today, we're going to fix that. Ever since I brought the truck home, the head unit has driven me crazy. It constantly glitches and freezes. I always have to hold down the power button and restart it. No Apple CarPlay, no Android Auto. The screen is about seven inches, I think, and by today's standards, it's very small. This is the non-JBL head unit with the built-in navigation, but today, all of it's coming out. We're gonna get something in here much better. This is the DeSeta Android 12 for the Toyota Tundra. It does all sorts of cool things. Most importantly, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Wireless. If you don't know what that is, well, you can do Android Auto or Apple CarPlay wireless. You don't have to plug it in, hence the whole wireless thing. Also, 10.2 inch QLED screen. It does 4G LTE, Bluetooth, uh, HDMI video outputs if you've got screens in the back or somewhere else in your vehicle, uh, music, radio, DSP, GPS navigation built in if you do not want to use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, Wi Fi, Bluetooth tethering, internet, split screen, steering wheel controls. RGB illumination and more. Uh, there is a link in the description down below for a discount code. Be sure to check that out. And we just got to install this thing. All right, we have a quick installation guide. All the harnesses, all the accessories, where they should go, how to pull out your old unit, more detailed instruction manual, warranty card, quite a bit of uh, cables and accessories and the unit itself. Be sure to disconnect the battery and then put something there where it won't accidentally touch or try to move it and pry it out of the way so it doesn't touch the terminal. We have to remove this lower panel and to do that I'm just going to use a couple of different little plastic pry tools we got and it should pop right out. Um, try not to push it down too much. It does need to slide out so as, as easily as you can gently use the pry tools to try to get in and get it started. If you don't have pry tools, be sure to check your box first because mine actually came with a couple little handy dandy pry tools and some zip ties for cleaning up that wiring harness. And now this portion needs to come out, it just pulls forward. Pops right out, one plug on the back, set that out of the way. Under the head unit, there will be four 10 millimeter screws. There is the two we see right here in the front, and then there is also two set back here on each side, which you'll have to use a, an extension to get those out. And for the outer two bolts in the very back, I'd like to stick a little bit of tape electrical or something in the socket because if those fall down there you might not ever get them back. Also helpful for putting them back in and like the rest of the pieces this should just pull straight back and out. Watch the dash. And we have a plethora of wires back here. Everything's gonna have to be unplugged and also the brackets on the side. Everything has to be unplugged. There is a couple harnesses that just kind of wire back into the head unit so you don't have to do those necessarily but just go through here maybe take a couple pictures along the way in case you get confused uh, when reinstalling the new head unit. Two head units side by side. Stock one on the right 
it takes up a lot of room, a lot of real estate, but there's not a whole lot of screen. Most of the DeSeto one is almost all screen, which is great. The website shows that you're only gonna use two of the bolts to retain the factory mounting bracket on the side. So all five of these will not be reused on this, only two. And make sure you do the uh, orientation accurately so that it actually fits in the dash. Let's follow the instructions and look at the diagrams to see which harness goes to what from your original head unit. Once all of your mini wiring harnesses are plugged into the factory harness, it's time to plug everything into the new head unit. It comes with three extra USB ports, which I'm just gonna use so that I have all of them. They just plug back into the head unit, that purple connector and the brown one. I'm just gonna tuck them underneath somewhere, maybe even run them into the glove box or something so that we have extra USB ports. It would be nice to run them down to um, where like the 12 volt outlets were and the other USB port just to have a couple extra ones. Never hurts to have more than just one. With this harness plugged in to the dash wiring, I have an extra plug and they say just don't use it. So if you have an extra one that doesn't go anywhere, don't stress too much. Um, just continue on with the install and see if it works. Everything's plugged back in, ready to go in. Pretty self-explanatory, not a whole lot of places that these plugs can go. The design is nice where each clip only goes into one spot. There is an HDMI, which I like. Output for, you know, if you want to have second and third screens maybe in the back. For kids, this little guy here is cool. It's a little antenna for the Wi-Fi. Um, I do like that there's all these amp outputs. There's speakers and subwoofers and this is nice if you're running an aftermarket system and they're all capped off so those will just go in there for now. My system right now is just wired into the stock amp under the seat um, but those are good to have as well. There's a couple different options for the rear camera. There is an, actual, an extra option for front camera so if the camera doesn't work maybe try swapping these two yellow connectors. Once the wiring harness and everything is hooked up, USB cables are ran to wherever you want to. I ran mine to the glove box. You're gonna wanna check to make sure the thing turns on before you reinstall everything. And most importantly, you're gonna wanna make sure that the reverse camera works. Cause there's a couple different options in the back, especially there's a front camera option, a rear camera option. Um, so make sure that works before you tidy it all up and put it back in. My head unit came with a secondary wiring harness. I believe this harness is for the 2020 to 2021. It does also say that the CAN bus box is shared. So make sure you switch this CAN bus box over to the harness that you need. Mine came attached to this harness, but I needed to unclip it and plug it into this harness that is for 2014 to 2019 Tundras. Four bolts holding the head unit. Go back in. I ran the microphone up here to the top of this third speaker grill. Um, I'm just gonna stick it here with the provided double stick tape. Another option may be better would be maybe on top of the steering column or somewhere, I don't know, it just has to be where you can be heard. The car, the unit has a mic here, but from what I've researched, they say this mic does not work very well. If you could run this, it's gonna be much better. So we're just gonna give it a go and see how it is. Just stick it right there. Why not? We've got to connect the phone to the device. iPhone. Pairing. Settings. It's going to show you the device name and the pin number. 0000. zero, zero, zero. Auto answer. Auto connect. And then we just got to pair it. Settings on your phone. Go to Bluetooth. And then it should be able to find it. Car kit down there. 
Hit car kit. The code was 0000000. Pair. Go. Z Link CarPlay comes up. Use CarPlay with Z Link. Yes, use CarPlay. And now it's paired. Look at that. We got our Pandora. We got our phone. Pairing is easy as that. Once the Bluetooth is paired from your phone, all you have to do is turn on your vehicle and it takes a few seconds and it should go right to CarPlay or Android Auto, whatever phone you have. If you have a video or song playing or anything, it will continue. And there it is. All the apps, everything good to go automatically from the home screen. Give it a shot. What's the best part? Mm. Ta-da! Ta I like it because it's as big as you can possibly get it in here without having a huge screen set away from the dash where you can't really get to the vents and the pocket up here. That's cool and all, but this is about the largest screen you can get and it's gonna be kind of flush mounted in there exactly in the factory location. Home button down here takes you to the main display. Does have built in navigation if you're not running CarPlay or Android Auto. This will take you right back. Amplifier is good to have. You can adjust the sounds over here, how you want it set up. If you want to boost certain frequencies and levels, loudness, bass, subs, uh, full on equalizer here if you really want to get technical. Pop, rock, these are all presets. You can do full custom. This allows you to, you know, move the music front to rear, left and right. If you want to make it a little more um, towards the driver, you can do that as well. Home button here takes you right back. You have music there. Volume controls on the steering wheel work without any crazy trickery or adapter. Have the radio over here. Back to the home button. Here's the navigation down here. Shortcuts. Different music, buttons at the bottom, volume, track next and the previous. Back over to the settings, car, if you have like TPMS sensors, um, you can have them read your tire pressure sensors. You can do, auto, if you have auto control for your AC, it'll tell you also the display on the screen. Tons of apps to pick from. You can modify it, see all 55 apps. You have default apps. Um, let's see, and those apps are basically all gonna be here. You're gonna have them on different screens. Google Chrome, Gmail, radio, YouTube, car controls. I believe YouTube, you have to plug in your phone if you wanna watch YouTube or be on Wi-Fi, or if you wanna be on your hotspot on your phone, you can do it wirelessly as well. These are all your vol your controls for the vehicle that comes from the factory. Um, daytime running lights, backup volume, um, how many times to unlock the door, if it locks going into park, if it unlocks coming out of park, and vice versa. That's all adjustable as well. Vehicle is where like your TPMS sensor and stuff would be. This is all my gas mileage and average on here. Um, it's pretty poor, so I don't really want to look at that. There's mirroring there if you want to mirror your screen. Facebook, Hulu, all your social media that you got to have. Netflix. And this is all customizable, and you can move it around. And my favorite right here is CarPlay. Look at that right there. Wireless CarPlay. If you hold down the app, you can actually drag and move it or throw it in the trash can. It's pretty simple. Thanks to Deseda for sending this to me for review, full disclosure. Um, so far for the money, I think you can't go wrong. I'm really happy with the unit. Everything seems to be functioning properly and um, I have to put it to use.